Welcome back into the Wolverine.com podcast uh, here on the Wolverine.com. Of course, you already know that. I said that twice. Anthony Broom here with Chris Ballas. Uh, Clayton Safey is at the the Big Rapids camp uh, with Jim Harbaugh and company today. So just a two-man show. But this is going to be primarily basketball. Actually, it's going to be all basketball. Uh, I know uh, John and Tom came on yesterday and sort of did the Musa Diabate reaction with the idea that Caleb Houston was going since then. Uh, both guys are gone. Both guys are staying in the NBA draft. So, Chris, I guess we'll just kind of hit the ground running here with that. I mean, it's not entirely surprising. I feel like we've talked about this ad nauseum the last month or so, that this is where it was heading. Um, There's been a lot of fan discourse around it. People upset that they never saw – I think people kind of feel robbed because they never saw what we thought the best version of those players would be. But at the end of the day, I think the expectation coming into the year is that one of the two would – probably definitely leave the other had a really good chance to leave and with that you were probably going to lose hunter dickinson too but you lose both of them you get hunter dickinson back and we finally it feels like the dust has settled on you know we had that long process back in the winter where okay the dust has settled on the jim harbaugh saga now we have dust settling here on the departures from the basketball program so just your overall thoughts on everything that's that's shaken out last month. That, that when you recruit guys like this, it's the risk you take, right? Because whether or not they're ready, they think they're ready. Their people think they're ready. And they if they come in with the idea that, hey, I'm going to be one and done and I'm going to go to the pros, they're going to look for any reason, right, to stay in the draft. This is the way it is this in this day and age. Look at Iggy Brasdakis uh, back in the day with, with uh, John Beeline. So it's unfortunate that – when we see these guys at their best, kind of like Jordan Poole, it's going to be in a couple of years in the NBA, you know, if it, things go well for them. Uh, and it's a, it's really, it's sad. But again, when you recruit a guy like Musa Diabate, who everybody said is raw and he's got potential and his best days are ahead of them, then you have to expect that you're not going to see the finished product at Michigan and it's a risky take. So uh, the sad part about this, the unfortunate part about this, I guess, Anthony, is that they found out on the last day. So you can't really hit the transfer for portal hard until you know these guys are gone and what they've told Imani Bates and guys like that for example AB is that they didn't have any room and now they have room will they kick the tires on an Imani Bates I don't think so I really don't that interest was really one-sided uh, when everybody was talking about Bates in Michigan but there are other guys in the portal Joey Baker from Duke uh, everybody's talking about um, uh, Pete Nance would be an unbelievable fit as a four and in my opinion could make Michigan a contender uh, I don't know about a national championship contender but certainly a Big Ten contender but now uh, you know what it's where we are in this era it's your team's going to look different every year Anthony I've pretty much come to expect that unless you recruit kids that are going to be four-year guys and that was kind of John Beeline's goal when he arrived here but even he wasn't immune from it so it's a different game it's a different era and it's just kind of the way it is i guess is the way to put it well and it's a double-edged sword too when you recruit the five-star type of guy you know that was the thing is like okay juan howard's coming into michigan they're gonna dip their toes in the water for more of these five-star guys and it it would be i don't want to say michigan luck or michigan's type of luck but you recruit two guys who i think technically are international students and can't really profit off of nil either so I don't know how much of a pitch there was to be made in terms of that uh, for coming back. But like I said, I think when you look at the totality of the off season now, like you said, if, if getting Hunter Dickinson back meant you lost those two guys and you could dip into the transfer portal and get a Pete Nance, or, you know, we'll talk about some of the other targets later. Um, I think a lot of people would take that. Now to me, the most disappointing out, outcome so far Uh, You know, when you look at this 2021 recruiting class, that's three guys of the six that are gone. Houston's gone. Diabate's gone. Those were your two five stars. And Frankie Collins, to me, uh, that's the one that I think, I don't want to say hurts the most, but the one that's the most surprising. And the one that I think probably long-term is a little more hurtful. I mean, even if he had to sit back a little more compared to Llewellyn this year, uh, you would think that by junior year, that guy was ready to go. But now you're kind of starting the clock over at point guard again. Uh, like they have the you know these first it'll be four years uh, four different starting point guards uh, for Jawan Howard so that one I think is that one I think is the most kind of difficult to wrap your head around um, you know all of a sudden the crown jewel of your recruiting class becomes Kobe Bufkin and it will be defined by what he does how will Shedder uh, develops I think that these depending on who they target in the portal if they target someone in the portal 
Will Cheddar is probably the biggest beneficiary of, of yesterday's moves. It's all of a sudden it's, it, it looks pretty different, but when you recruit six guys, I mean, the math just suggests that all six of them aren't going to be exactly what you thought they would. Yeah, that's the thing. And that's why you don't look at, that's why you don't celebrate number one recruiting classes, right? And everybody talks about Jawan Howard's recruiting compared to John Beeline's recruiting, so on and so forth. Look at the guys that John Beeline put in the league and what these guys accomplished at Michigan. Um, it's not about, it's like he used to say, it's not about what you get on paper when they get here. It, look at what they do after they leave. Look at guys like Karis LeVert, for example. Nick Stauskas was the number 75 player in the country when he was recruited, and he ends up being a lottery pick. So uh, that's how you measure recruiting. And so I think they're still looking for that sweet spot, A.B. Of, and I think a guy like Terrace Reed, for example, can be that. Now, the problem there, too, is you don't know. Maybe Terrace Reed has it in his mind that he's going to be a one and done, even though you know he's a top 40 kid. And, hey, I just wanted to go to college for a year. That's the way that that's the turn that this thing has taken here. Even if you're not ready, guys think they're ready or guys want to develop in the G League rather rather than college. But um, you know what? A guy like Pete Nance would be a great fit. And there was a I had a question anyway, how Diabate and Hunter Dickinson fit together on the on the court. And I was actually talking to assistant Phil Martelli about this a couple weeks ago. And he said they had a plan. He said Juwan Howard and Howard Isley are brilliant offensive strategists, he said, and he gave them all the credit in the world. He said there was no way that the offense was going to be clunky if those guys were on the floor together. Uh, they were going to find ways to make it better. But I, to me, if you can swap Nance for Diabate, uh, to me, that's a huge upgrade. I don't know that it's going to happen. In fact, there's been a lot of buzz that it's not going to happen, that he's, you know, Gonzaga was in the picture, Illinois. Uh, there was actually buzz yesterday on the Illinois boards that he was going to stay in the draft, which didn't happen. So if you're Michigan now, you go all out. Now, I don't care what NAL, the angle you can play or whatever, you try to get a Pete Nance. Um, and there are other guys too that in that portal still that can help you. But uh, to your point about point guards, AB, I think that's a great point. You'd love to have some consistency there. And I'm hoping that Doug McDaniel's that guy. He's smaller. He's not a guy that's going to be going to the league anytime soon. He could be a Xavier Simpson type point guard with a little bit a little bit better shooter, but he's one of the best passers in high school basketball. Uh, if they can get a guy like that and grow with him uh, and build around him and he becomes who you hope he is, I think that would be great because, uh, yeah, you need some consistency and stability at that position. Well, it's like the same debate, throwing it back to football. When's Jim Harbaugh going to recruit and start his own quarterback? It's the same right. deal with Juwan and the point guards now. Uh, let's talk a little more in depth about some of these potential transfer portal uh, fits. I wrote about that uh, this morning. Uh, we're recording this here on Thursday morning. Uh, there is an article on the front page of some guys that I think would be good fits. I mean, Pete Nance is right at the top of that list. I think he's the potential white whale addition. You look at what he did at Northwestern last year. A touch under uh, 15 points per game, shot 50% from the field. He was a 45% shooter from three, which was up almost 10%. That's insane, getting that from the four spot. So I think putting him next to Hunter Dickinson, I mean, I, I, I don't – well, here's the thing too is that I don't know how hard Michigan's going to hit the portal because I just saw on Twitter Jawan Howard's in France right now. So I don't know what type of work is being done at home at the moment, but – um, you know, if you're going to go after Pete Nance, it's got to be an all out full court press like right now, because I don't think that that's a recruitment that will last very long. Um, hopefully, hopefully he's got the international plan, A.B. So, he can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would think so. Yes. Um, you know, when you look at Nance, I mean, I, you know, you go through on three's transfer portal rankings is the fourth best guy on the board. Like I said, if it's at all realistic, this this is someone we talk about, you know, the Detroit Lions rush the, the pick in to get Aiden Hutchinson. This is a guy you rush to make phone calls to uh, to, to get him in your program. Uh, Amani Bates, I, we don't need to go too in-depth on it. I think that that's been well plowed at this point. But uh, I tend to believe if he was a uh, if he was a fit for this, he probably would already be a Wolverine, considering all the contact that was taking place earlier on in the offseason. But if he's still on the board, now that you have a uh, you have these spots available – you know, Jawan Howard talks about culture, and if you believe in your culture, that can be a guy that you do take a take a swing on. But I don't know if that's a fit. Other guys I wrote about, uh, Muhammad Gaye from Washington State, Manuel Acon is still out there, uh, Jacob Grandison from Illinois, someone who kind of fits that Shondi Brown uh, type mold, just dipped into the portal yesterday. So uh, in addition to Joey Baker, too. So any of those names stick out to you, or do you think that Michigan will be in contact with any of these guys? 
They will, and, and they have been with Nance. So uh, I, I'm with you. Uh, you'd go all out right now. Grandison, too, is fascinating because of the, the hard feelings, we'll call them, between Michigan and Illinois and, uh, and the rivalry there that's been budding. So I think he'd be a great fit. Uh, he'd be another villain. You know, Phil Martelli talks about Hunter Dickinson playing the villain in these venues and, and playing it well. He thinks he's got a career in pro wrestling when his basketball days are, are behind him. And, uh, and you can see that with Grandison, the, especially with uh, Illinois, that'd be fantastic. And I think he'd be a great fit. You need shooters. Fair shooters. Again, talking to Martelli, he said, we understand we need shooters. Uh, they hope that Jet Howard will be that guy. Uh, you're going to be leaning on some more of these freshmen, no matter what, A.B., at this point. And they, they need some of them to step up as shooters. Jet Howard is obviously uh, your number one guy in that respect. So, But if you can get a Grandinson and you can get uh, uh, Pete Nance, uh, that would be amazing. It would be, uh, to me, uh, yeah, the, the team's going to have a different look, but you've got guys that have experience. And here's the thing about Jalen Llewellyn, too. We talk about ha having, you know, starting with a new point guard. At least these guys that he's bringing in have a lot of experience playing at the level. So it's not like they're coming in as true freshmen and you're starting over with a new true freshman every year. You're starting off with a lot of guys who have played high-level basketball at a high clip against great competition. So that's good news. But to me, that's where the, it starts. Uh, I wouldn't take a guy that's not a good shooter. Uh, and when it comes to Imani Bates, you know what? It, it, it could be one of those things where desperate times call for desperate measures, but it is a risk. There's no doubt about it. And uh, they actually played better when Imani Bates at, at Memphis this year, when Imani Bates wasn't on the team, wasn't playing. So, uh, you know what? You'd have to have a lot of faith in, in Jawan Howard that this is going to work. Uh, and I have faith in Jawan Howard, but I, I'm still not convinced it would work. Yeah, I'm with you there. That's like I said before, I think if that was a fit, this probably would be done already because yes. there's so much buzz early on. And I think it, it's pretty telling that, you know, when you have a guy who just a year ago was seen as this this phenom, this the next big thing. Uh, to me, I actually think it's kind of a cautionary tale. It kind of get like some Todd Marinovich vibes out of yes. Frank with you. Um, you know, the fact that that guy is still hanging around and no one's really gone after him. Um, that's a red flag to me. I'm sorry. Uh, but, you talk, you know, you talk about some of these program guys. You need guys to stick around and be fixtures. I mean, Hunter Dickinson's going to be a junior. I mean, that's he's one of those guys now. You can officially say that. I know that it took NIL to get him to stay, but – He's here and he's sticking around and who knows, maybe he's around for another year with more NIL. We'll see what happens with that. But, you know, you need you need him uh, to continue to be what he's been. You need Terrence Williams to step up and take the leap this year as a junior. You know, I, I think he needs to be a little more than just a role player that brings you some spotty shooting, but good energy off the bench. I think this needs to be a big offseason for him. Jace Howard can be a program guy. Um, you know, you need your cheddars and your your Buffkins and, and your Isaiah Barnes to kind of take the leap and be ready to play, just be playable uh, as sophomores. And then you look at from what are the other, some of the other things they need. I mean, Jet Howard, there's going to be a little more pressure on him, I think, than we initially expected. But I think he's, I think he's cut out for that. I think he's made for it. Terrace Reed's going to play. I think Doug McDaniel's going to have to play. And, uh, you know, when I, when I talked to Greg Glenn's uh, AAU coach a couple weeks ago for our basketball a recruiting issue of the magazine, which is available, be sure to go check that out. Um, he seems to believe that's going to be a guy who, you know, a year from now winds up being a pretty big contributor. So you need those program guys. I don't see any freshman in danger of making that leap in the year. Now, I think it'd be a pleasant surprise, but um, yeah, I think this is, this is basically kind of your team with, I, I, I do think I'll say this, they have two scholarship spots open. I think they'll definitely use one in the portal. Would you expect them to use two? I'm kind of thinking they might just hoard that extra spot. It depends on who it is and if they can help. You know, you don't just take a guy to take a guy, in my opinion. Uh, you know what? If you feel confident in Jet Howard, and I would imagine that Juwan does, uh, you know, and, and he had a great, let's be honest, he had a great uh, tournament game. All-star games are are just, you know what, it's like an NBA all-star game when you get these high school all-star games. And But Jet Howard did play well at the Iverson Classic and showed some things there that we weren't sure he could do with the ball. So maybe he exceeds expectations. And let's be honest, we don't have any clue what to expect. We know that Michigan's getting one of the best players in college basketball back in, in Hunter Dickinson, and you're surrounding him with guys who we know can play. 
at least they, they've proven that they can at, at other levels. So Jalen Llewellyn's a guy who played pretty well against some high-level competition too. So who knows how good this team will be. But I agree with you. I think they'll take one for sure. Will they take two? I wouldn't say that. So, But uh, there's no question in my mind that they'll at least take one. They need that. Uh, and one other thing I will say to your Terrence Williams observation is that I'm kind of excited to see him playing significant minutes with Hunter Dickinson because when these guys play together like they did in high school, you can see there's a synergy there and a chemistry that they have. Even from year one, uh, there were a couple of times in tournament games where Terrence made some entry passes to Hunter that were only he could get them. And I thought, man, that's a sign of a couple guys that really know each other's games. And so maybe he gets his opportunity and makes the most of it and maybe he surprises us and becomes one of those guys that goes from role player to you know 10 uh, 12 point per game guy and uh, he's got to improve defensively though that's one thing that martelli told me about him uh, and that's going to be really something that we're going to watch closely anthony about this team too is how well they play defensively that's going to be the biggest concern because you've got a lot of guys that haven't played a lot uh, and it takes a lot to be a great defensive team in this system it's like martelli said the playbook both on defense and offense is huge. So uh, going to be fascinating to see how this team comes together this spring or this winter. Yeah. Terrence Williams is a guy I've circled right now as, you know, I don't want to say it's a one-to-one -one comparison, but I would love to see him make that Isaiah livers type sophomore to junior year leap. I think that he can, he can probably, and this is, I mean, I'm a, I'm a schlub sitting here, you know, with my fat rolling over my, the sides here, it probably needs to get a little more athletic. Uh, you know, he'll be, he'll be putting in the work in the off season, but uh, I think they need him a little bit more on the wing and it's a big off season for him. Uh, we know that he can, we know that he can shoot. He's been streaky, but to have that guy put it together, I mean, that could be one of the, like d really, I think who they add in the portal might be kind of contingent on how confident they are that he can kind of take that leap. Cause if he does, I mean, you'd love to add Pete Nance regardless, but if they think that Terrence Williams has a chance to take this livers type of leap, then maybe you are kind of swinging a little quieter, like with a Joey Baker or a, or a Grandison or something like that. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I just kind of final thoughts on the transfer portal here. Uh, I, I trust Juwan in this regard because they've done a really commendable job in the portal in terms of adding guys. I think a couple of years ago, they batted a thousand with Mike Smith and Shondi Brown. I think those both went better than expected, uh, even considering, you know, the team success had a lot to do with that. But, uh, Devonte Jones was kind of more of like a double, uh, but he played out, he played pretty well towards the end of the year. And you saw how important he was down the stretch for that team. Uh, like you said, the chemical mixture of this team is going to be way different. Um, but given that, you know, something was, I know they've talked a lot about the culture and we don't need to do a deep dive into it today, but something did just kind of seem off about that group last year. Mm -hmm. So I don't think some fresh blood and, and, I don't want to say addition by subtraction, but I feel like some fresh air, some oxygen for some of these guys might not be the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, getting back to the Sweet 16 was great, but it was also a team that was a pro like they were a product of what their record said they were. They were 19 and 15. That's not good enough. It wasn't good enough given the talent level of that team. So there's a lot to improve upon. Uh, I think some new faces, some guys in expanded roles, I think is going to help this group. And I, I still, regardless of, of Wednesday's news, I expect them to be better next year. Yeah, they can be. Uh, with, with Hunter Dickinson coming back, that was obviously the big one, right? Uh, I love the thought of Jet Howard coming in and playing for his dad. When I see Jace Howard play out there, and I understand his limitations, you see a guy that doesn't want to fail and understands how important this is, not just to the, the program and the university, but to family, to his dad. I expect the same out of Jet Howard. And so, yeah, they're different players, but I expect that kind of of want to and that, that kind of, hey, let's go get it. Uh, and Greg Glenn is another guy like that. And speaking to analysts and to, uh, to people close to the program, he's known Jawan Howard his whole life. This is a guy that uh, would die on that, you know, would die for you, not literally, obviously, but to go out there for Jet for Jawan Howard and play his butt off for him. So uh, I'm excited about that and, and the chemistry and seeing how these guys come together. I'm excited about the Kobe Bufkin potential second year leap and Isaiah Barnes too. And talking to Martelli, he said, Isaiah Barnes, finishing at the rim, absolutely explosive, made huge strides. And he said the freshman to sophomore deal is a real thing, the improvement there. So uh, Kobe Bufkin has a lot to give, in my opinion. There's a reason he was in a McDonald's All-American. And uh, what 
Martelli said he's got to be able to put one bad shot or missed shot behind him and move on to the next one. That's his big thing, but I think he's got the ability. So it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. And uh, it'll be interesting these next few weeks to see what happens in the portal too. AB. Uh, never a dull moment around here. No, we keep waiting for a moment to breathe during this off, season, <laughs> whether it's the football off season, whether it's basketball off season. Uh, we'll talk about football preview here in a second, but yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe by the end of June, maybe sitting on my porch and having having a beverage or two and just, just yeah. breathing a little bit, doing some deep yeah. breathing exercises. So there's no time, there's no downtime anymore. You know that. So <laughs> there's what it is. Full thinking. Uh, exactly. so before I get out of here, just real quick plug. Uh, we are working on the football preview magazine right now. Uh, want to get the word out there about that. Um, no work. I don't want to say round the clock because we do have to sleep sometime, but everyone is is totally busting their ass right now, putting this thing together, 160 full color pages of you know, news, notes, analysis. There's nobody in this in this market that will have done a bigger deep dive on this 2022 football team than, than we will have. So we're excited about that. A lot of work, but I, I think it's worth it. Uh, there's three ways for you guys to kind of order and save on it. Uh, if you're a member of uh, the Fort, there is a link um, that is available on the message board where you can get an $8 discount on the order. You're getting it for, I believe, $9.99 as opposed to $14.99 uh, plus the free shipping. So basically, you're getting a full football preview for $10, bucks, which is far less than what you can get it for at the bookstore, ordering it online, whatever it is. Uh, if you're not a member of, of the Fort or the Wolverine.com, you can pre-order the issue um, on the WolverineOnDemand.com. Uh, if you pre-order it before June 27th, you're going to save on shipping. So that's four bucks that you just won't be paying. You'll just pay the $14.95. Or if you're already a magazine subscriber, you are going to uh, get a preview with your football. Um, or you're going to get a football preview with your annual magazine subscription. So we're going to keep putting the word out on that. Uh, the link for the uh, for the football preview will be in the description below of both the podcast and the video here on YouTube. Uh, Chris, I guess, what are you kind of working on with that preview right now? I want to say that I had an unbelievable conversation with Mike Morris the other day, and this guy is one of the more uh, in intelligent, incredible interviews I've ever done. So I cannot wait to write that one. Uh, a lot of guys like that on this team here. And that's what excites me. Uh, we did the season preview in past years when we were filling out our top five players. You'd have three obvious candidates and then two guys. Well, if they come on and, you know, maybe they'll be in that top five. It was at least 10 guys that we had to sort through to get that top five. That's how deep and impressive this team is going to be. We've got exclusive interviews with some of the players, some of the coaches. So always worth it. And, and for the old timers, especially having that thing that you can read on the can, you know, <laughs> is, uh, is something that uh, I, I know I still appreciate. And, uh, and a lot of people do. People like to have that in their hands. So we hope you'll order it. Yeah, I'm an old soul, as you said before. I, I, I still use physical media. I buy I buy CDs. I read books. I buy <laughs> magazines. Uh, it, it feels good to have something in your hand. And for me, this is my first football preview. It's going to feel good to have something in my hand that I was a part of and that we were. A part yeah. Of. So yeah, you'll be proud of it. Man. Definitely. Uh, hope you guys will take advantage of that. Uh, Chris, that's going to do it for today. Appreciate your time. Everyone to watch and listen. Uh, we appreciate your time as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on YouTube below. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes. All that good. It's only good reviews though. We have egos. We need you to stroke <laughs> the egos for us. Uh, other than that, I appreciate it, Chris. And we'll talk to everyone soon. You bet. Thanks, Anthony.